Now, let's try to identify some of the common differences that exist between a perfect competitive environment and a monopoly. The first dimension that I would look at is with respect to pricing and the output. We have already discussed in our earlier uh, sessions that whatever is the market structure, the profit maximizing output that anyone is going to produce is that particular quantity where MR is going to be equal to MC. The marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve from the bottom. Here, the interesting thing that we have to understand is, look at this. The marginal cost curve cutting the marginal revenue curve. This is the case. Now, if this is the quantity that has to be produced by a monopoly, look at the price that would be charged by the monopoly for this. If I am looking at it on the demand curve, this quantity on the demand curve goes for this much price. So, monopoly is charging a higher price. Now, in case of the perfect competition, we know that AR is same as MR is same as that of the price. So, probably the same AR curve will be the same as the MR curve also for me in a perfect competitive environment. So, MC cutting the MR. So, in a perfect competition, this much of quantity needs to be produced. But corresponding to it, when I am looking at the price, it is lesser compared to the monopoly. So what is that we can talk in terms of price and the output? The monopoly can traditionally charge a higher price compared to that of the perfectly competitive market. And quantity wise, monopoly can quite comfortably sell a lesser quantity also. So, produce, produce where MR is uh, less than MC, even if required. But even if it is producing at MR equal to MC also, the price would be much higher. And uh, the, yeah, uh, the, the average revenue would be the price. So, monopolistic, it is producing a lower output and a higher price and it need not produce see it cannot it need not compare with the average variable cost or it need not compare itself with the long run average cost so need not produce at the bottom of the long run average cost it can very much produce slightly above or slightly below it as well so that's uh, the pricing can be done at a much much higher price in case of a monopoly. Now looking at the other dimension which is the efficiency relating to the production. Now any firm when I am saying it is efficient its average cost should be minimum. That is where it is trying to get the maximum profit. The where it is able to reduce the average cost, work at the minimum possible average cost. And that's where we talk about the marginal cost curve. Generally, we say that it cuts the average cost curve at its minimum point only. And that is the most efficient kind of production. So any production efficiency I talk about, it is achieved if the firm is producing at the minimum average cost. And in case of a perfect competitive environment, we directly see that firms operate at the minimum average cost itself. Otherwise, if they are not operating at the minimum average cost, they are uh, losing out, they are facing a kind of a loss. Whereas from the monopolistic perspective, they need not operate at the minimum average cost. Even if the average cost is slightly higher for them, they generate the pricing also at a much, much higher levels and still make a profit. But 
one important point that we need to understand is though monopolistic monopolists they don't have any kind of uh, incentive to really stay efficient but let's try to understand that they have the ability to keep the production more and more efficient because they have all the resources that they can access they have they it's it's purely their willingness and the ability they have the ability it's only the willingness for them to stay more and more efficient but we need to understand in case any monopolist uh, is becoming more and more efficient they can really generate super normal profits in the long run because the average costs are going to go low drastically whatever the price they are setting the average revenue is much much higher the difference is contributing to the profit per unit and with the increase in the number of units the overall profit is getting completely maximized so the more and more productive efficiency that is followed by a monopolist though not required but the more and more uh, effective production methods being followed by the monopolist i can very clearly see that the profit generation potential in the long run generating super normal profits in the long run becomes a very very uh, uh, easier situation for a monopolist whereas from a perfect competitive firm probably operating at a productive efficiency is needed otherwise it can't survive it has to keep itself uh, efficient because at the end it can't dictate the price it's a price taker the only way it can gain its uh, normal profit is to have an efficiency in terms of production the moment it is not able to achieve that efficiency it may have to get out of the business so it becomes the need for a perfectly competitive firm in case the competitors are becoming more and more efficient and if this firm does not react to that if this firm does not respond to the moves of the competitors and it does not become efficient probably it may be uh, kicked out of the business altogether but at the same time whatever this firm has done in terms of improving the efficiency in a pro in a perfect competitive market even the competitors are going to imitate that even the competitors are going to react to that immediately which means whatever the additional cost that is incurred in terms of achieving that additional efficiency it is getting wiped away by the competition but one thing we have to un- understand without maximizing efficiency they cannot generate any profit so the profit generation has to come uh, only through the efficiency maximization in a perfect competitive environment because they can't change the price their average revenue cannot change the only thing is they can cut down on their average costs and try to generate a profit so they have an incentive to really maximize the efficiency they have to do it but they cannot benefit from the economies of scale so something which for a for a perfectly competitive uh, environment based firm it's the need whereas for a monopolist though it's not a need it really makes it more and more profitable in the long run so uh, it has to use its ability to maximize the efficiency and then if i look at from the optimal efficiencies perspective why do a monopolist looks for efficiency economies of scale so ar will become much higher compared to ac average cost will become much much lesser if it is going with the economies of scale so automatically the profit is going to be drastically higher now it can use it has the resources it has the capital where it can do a lot of r&d based investments improve the process improve the efficiency reduce the average costs and increase the profit so that's one more reason why a monopolist must look out for an efficiency they can become more and more innovative efficient all will drive profits 
So that's one of the prime reason monopolist, though there is uh, no incentive, it can look at it from a different perspective in the long run in terms of uh, generating profits. Now that is the productive efficiency side. On the other dimension, we also have allocative efficiency. This is more looking from a social welfare perspective. Allocation of the resources in such a way that it uh, maximizes the welfare of the society. That's the reason we call a point called social optimum point, which is that much of uh, quantity where this the social welfare is getting completely maximized. So I'm looking at from two dimensions the value which the product gives to the consumer. How much the consumer is willing to pay for this particular good. The higher the consumer is willing to pay, the higher has to be allocated for that particular product. Similarly, I am looking at from the perspective of the resources, the cost of resources that are being used, which is more to do with the marginal cost of the firm. So let's look at it from two dimensions. One, the price which the consumers are willing to pay. It's a factor that affects the decision. The second, the costs that are typically being incurred by the firm in terms of producing that particular product. Which means these two have to be looked at, which means every firm will target that kind of an output level. For allocative efficiency purpose, the firm will target that kind of output level as long as the price is equal to the marginal cost. As long as the price is greater than the marginal cost, it can produce one more, one more, one more and finally uh, uh, make an additional profit. And at the same time, people are ready to pay for it, which means it is increasing the welfare. Similarly, if the price is lesser than the marginal cost, it means that people are uh, uh, people are uh, not ready to spend anything more than that. So there is no point in selling that additional uh, output, decrease the output and uh, that is where the people are more and more happier. So we talk about the output level where the price and the marginal costs are remaining the same are more or less equal. That output is what will bring out the allocative efficiency. And what we see is in the perfect competitive world, the firms will operate always at the social optimum output level itself. But in case of monopoly, they still can produce much less than the social optimum output. But if they produce at the social optimum output, where the price becomes more and more equal to the MC, they can still, in some cases, they may make a loss, but they have to work around in terms, they can, they can operate at that level only provided they get some kind of subsidies from the government in some cases. But yes, they may not uh, be more interested in uh, operating uh, at that kind of an allocative efficiency level. But in case of uh, perfect competition, we see that the firms are operating at the allocative efficiency layers itself. Probably if you look at the diagram also, in case of monopoly, this is the AR equal to D curve. This is the MR curve. This is the MC. And let's say this is the AC. You look at here where the price is equal to MC. Right? The price is equal to MC. So generally this is the profit maximizing uh, output also. So MR equal to MC in case of perfect competition. So they have produced that MR equal to MC equal to price. Sorry, MR equal to uh, AR equal to price. But so when the MC curve is cutting the MR curve, it means MR MC curve is uh, cutting even the price curve there. So price is equal to MC in case of perfect competition. But uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, monopoly, you see that they generally operate where MR and MC cut, so they produce only this much of quantity. But allocative efficiency comes out at this quantity, 
which means generally the firms operate at much lesser than the social optimum output level. But if they have to produce, let's say, this much, you look at that in some cases their average cost is uh, lesser. So the price is higher so they can make a profit. But in some cases it may so happen that their average cost will be much higher. In that case they are incurring a loss also and that is very much feasible only if, say, if their uh, average cost is actually uh, increasing then they may not be willing to operate at that particular quantity so firms generally and it's not a profit maximizing level of output for them so they do not produce at the social optimum output level in general cases whereas from a perfectly competitive environment operating firms perspective they have to because uh, the mc curve when it touches the MR is the profit maximization and because MR is equal to P that is even the social optimum point for uh, and that's an allocative efficiency situation in case of perfect competition. And whenever I talk about a word called economic efficiency in case of uh, any company the good is produced both from the perspective of uh, productive efficiency which means the average cost is minimum and at the same time, it is also able to achieve allocative efficiency, which means the price is equal to the marginal cost. When these two terms are really working out, it, that is that particular scenario where the firm is operating on an economic efficiency note. So this is how we have to differentiate between, uh, uh, between uh, the monopoly and the physical comp uh, perfect competition environments. Now, towards the end, I just need to bring about an interesting theory called as theory of contestable markets with just extent, which just not looks at the simple monopoly power or a basic monopoly theory. It looks at the potential competition, the entry barriers and the exit costs as well in terms of deciding whether the competition exists, whether the contestability exists or does not exist. And this theory simply says whenever I am talking about the potential competition, it's not the actual existence of the competition. It's the, 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 the threat which the firms feel regarding the price and the output of the competition. That is what we have totally look at as a potential competition. And whenever it talks about those markets which are potentially contestable, I should be able to enter into that market, exit into that market, exit from that market very freely. Because if I'm just talking about the entry barriers, yes, as long as I enter fine, but if I have to exit, if I, there is a lot of procedure and difficulty for me to exit out of that market, probably I may not be interested in entering into that market. I may not be interested in competing in that particular market. So I have to really see whether the barriers to entry and exit, both of them are not there. And that kind of firms, which are operating in those kind of markets, they always look at keeping their prices down, they operate at as much efficient positions as possible because they want to survive in the business. Even if it is the location of a natural monopolist, they try to work as efficiently as possible, which means from a customer's standpoint, the best possible price and the quantity are being operated. So the theory of contestable market tries to analyze which are the contestable firms by looking at not just the competition, but using potential competition, the barriers to entry as well as exit. But the only drawback of this particular uh, model is, it does not look at the established firm which has already created a dominating position in the market and that can literally influence any firm from entering into the market. So this is how we differentiate uh, the monopoly from uh, the traditional perfect competition. We need to have a good understanding of these two markets because these are the two extremities in terms of the behavior of the markets. All right.